Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago, Lethbridge City Council debated a resolution proposed by Councillor Blaine Hagan to stop Arches, a local harm reduction agency, from distributing free clean needles in the community, as well as to petition the provincial government to freeze funding to their supervised consumption site. During the debate, Hagen opened with a 20-minute monologue filled with fallacies, rumors, mistruths, and harmful rhetoric. In this video, I'm going to break that all down. This is my longest video to date, so pop some popcorn. We're going to be here for a while. Okay, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Hagen. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, a couple weeks ago when I put this notice of motion in, um, I just, I've been gathering my thoughts over the last, uh, well, more than the last couple weeks, but put them down and I just, I don't want to forget something. So I've, I've, uh, uh, um, I'll be reading my, my notes that I've done over the last while and uh, we'll do my opening that way. So first of all, I want to thank all those that attended the rallies today and have gathered in council chambers for this motion. Also, thank you to all those who have taken the time to email, phone, and otherwise connect with council. This is a democracy, and as your elected representatives, we need to hear from you to do our jobs representing you. A big thank you to everyone that reached out to me personally to provide me your input, opinions, and personal experiences with relation to arches, the SES, needle debris, and crime, and crime in our fair city. I'm proud to represent you and bring your concerns to council. I will continue to do my best to the best of my ability. I wanna thank the co-sponsors of this resolution, namely Councillor Morrow and Councillor Parker. They are the two longest serving members of our council with a combined total of about 40 years on council. Their support means a lot to the people of Lethbridge and I thank them for that. We're number one. That's normally something you want to hear when it applies to your favorite sports team. However, Lethbridge is now hearing it for the wrong reasons. We're number one because our crime statistics are number one. This is appalling to me. Then do something about it. The crime severity index has increased for Lethbridge every year you've been in office. In fact, it didn't start rising until you got in office. You've had six years to deal with it. Weren't you concerned about the increasing crime rate in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017? Or is it only an issue now that it's higher than other communities? Or maybe it's an issue because you finally have a concrete, visible scapegoat. I love Lethbridge. I choose it to be my home. I choose it for where I raise my family. And I choose it where I do business. I want it to be a safe, free, fear-free, low crime community. I don't want us to be number one. I don't want us on national and international news because we have the highest crime rate. Again, then do something about it. Do something that will address the underlying causes of crime. Obviously, making sure the Lethbridge Police Service is the single most highly funded city entity isn't making crime go down. It's time to come up with real solutions. We're number one. We have the busiest drug consumption site in North America. That's a good thing. The more people using this site, the fewer people using it in public. Again, I don't want us to be number one for drug consumption, whether supervised or unsupervised. 200,000 drug uses in our city is not something to be proud of. It is if those drug uses occurred in the consumption site. That's 200,000 drug uses not happening in public. That means fewer needles, less drug debris, and less harm to the public. I've communicated with EMS personnel, and they say, don't kid yourself, 200,000 is way low. They say maybe as high as 500,000 uses once you take into account drug usage both outside of the SES and inside the SES. Okay, I'm not sure how EMS personnel know how many uses happen in the city. They're obviously not called to every instance of drug use. How would they even know how many instances of drug use there are in the entire city? I've seen drug use happening at parks and alleyways and other places, and I rarely see EMS personnel around when it happens. So how do they know how many instances there are if they aren't around when each occurs? And what about drug usage in homes and workplaces and schools? How would they be aware of those without being called out to attend them? I'm skeptical that EMS have an accurate count of the number of total drug uses in the city since the SCS opened. But 
for the sake of argument, let's assume their 500,000 figure is correct. They're basically saying that if the SCS didn't exist, the number of instances of drug uses happening outside the SCS would go up by 50%. The SCS existing has cut the number of outside instances of drug use in half, assuming those numbers are correct. In spite of the SCS, and I'll say it as SCS, Supervised Consumption Site, or if perhaps because of it, we have more drug uses still occurring right side, right outside the SES and throughout our great city. There's literally no evidence that the number of drug uses has increased in Lethbridge because of the SES. Not one shred of evidence. Higgin is dog whistling here. Oh, I wasn't actually saying that drug use has increased in Lethbridge because of the SES. See, I said perhaps. In spite of the SES or perhaps because of it, EMS calls volumes are not significantly reduced. 200,000 drug uses at the SCS, perhaps as many as 500,000 in our community. That is a mind boggling number. Okay, this is misleading. EMS don't respond to every instance of drug use. They respond to medical emergencies, and even then, not every one. They don't respond every time someone injects something or inhales something. They aren't responding to 500,000 calls. It's mind-boggling because you're conflating things. And of course EMS calls are reduced. For every 10 overdoses occurring at the SES, 8 to 9 of them never require EMS personnel. The vast majority of overdoses in the SES are handled by the SES personnel. That's literally thousands of overdoses since the SES opened that EMS personnel haven't had to respond to. If the SES didn't exist, EMS call volumes would most definitely be higher. Drug uses come after drug deals. You've got to get the drugs to use them. I've been told that the average drug deal is for only a hit or two at a time. Told by whom? See, this is a common tactic Hagen uses in this monologue. He depends on the appeal to authority fallacy. In nearly 20 minutes of opening statement, he never once cites actual data or research. It's all conjecture based on testimony from people he framed as experts and that somehow the opinions of this handful of people should have more weight than actual data and published research. Let's say for a moment that if the average drug deal, an addict purchases five hits of his or her drug of choice, that means we have about 40,000 and 100,000 drug deals in our city. Again, let that sink in. We're number one. Many tens of thousands of drug deals in our city. That's not good. Okay, but how is this relevant to the motion? The motion is regarding limiting needle distribution from the SCS and petitioning the provincial government to restrict funding for the SCS. Why is Higgin trying to tie the SCS to all the drug deals in the city? Surely he doesn't think that Lethbridge was drug free prior to last year. People have said on social media that I must hate drug users and I want them to die because I'm against the SCS. I don't hate them. I have compassion for them. I don't want them to die. I want them to be enabling. I don't want to be enabling and indeed encouraging them to stay on drugs. I'm so tired of this myth. The SES doesn't enable drug usage. People who are addicted to drugs are going to use drugs, regardless of whether a consumption site exists. They would find a way to get their needles if Artis wasn't handing them out, even if it meant stealing them, using makeshift ones, reusing old ones, or borrowing someone else's. By allowing people to use drugs at the SES, Arches reduces deaths, reduces infection rates, and reduces risk to the public. I want them off drugs. I want them clean and healthy. I want them to be part of our society. I want them living life to the fullest potential with friends and a sense of purpose. Then why aren't you advocating for this? Imagine if you took all of the energy you have put into building a movement to oppose the one service we have for improving the quality of life of people who use drugs and redirected it into building a movement to demand that the provincial government find additional services in Lethbridge, such as detox, intox, and supportive housing. Imagine if you had encouraged the hundreds of people who came out to show opposition to the SCS to instead write to the provincial government. If you truly want them off drugs and to have better lives, why are your efforts to do so invisible? Arches is based on the accepted model that to prevent the spread of bloodborne diseases, drug users should not share 
or reuse needles. A point of clarification. Arches is more than the supervised consumption sites. Arches has been in Lethbridge for decades and provides more than just supervised consumption services. In fact, they provide more than just harm reduction services. I believe we all agree this is indeed good. Inside the SES, I trust that needles are being used only once, then disposed of. Excellent. Okay, this is a weird thing to say. The way this is worded makes it seem as though it's possible that Arches personnel aren't disposing used needles, preventing them from being used again. Why not just say needles are being used only once then disposed of? Also, this wording makes it seem as though Higgin has never been to the SCS. And if that's true, it makes me wonder how he can be so confident in his position. He's willing to talk to cops and EMS but not step into the SCS? However, what happens to the needles that Arch is freely to distribute into our community. You mean the needles they've been distributing for years? Do they know how many needles are being used and by whom? Do they follow each and every needle once it leaves the SES? No, they don't. Of course they don't. How would you even do that? Embed a chip into each one? Track the non-existent serial number on each one? Follow every person who gets a needle? I've heard that needles are given out to dealers so they can preload them with drugs and sell them to users. There it is again. I've heard. Heard from whom? Doug Hamilton? Mark Switzer? Some random guy in Fairmont? There's no way to verify the accuracy of this information. Stop for a moment and think about that. Let that sink in. Arches is using tax dollars, tax dollars, our money, to supply needles to drug dealers. That just blows my mind. Except they're not. Sure, it's possible drug dealers are using such needles, but making needles available to everyone isn't the same thing as supplying needles to dealers. Supplying needles to drug dealers implies that Arches knowingly and purposefully gives them to the dealers. How would you even prevent this? Ask each person if they're a drug dealer? Of course they're gonna say no. Actually, I know how Hagen would prevent this. Just shut down the site. Prevent needles being distributed at all. Free needles to drug dealers. Diabetics? Sorry, by your own. Then advocate for free needles for diabetics. I don't get this. If you think a group of people should have improved health care, then advocate for it. In, communi in communicating with rank and file members of the Lethbridge Police Service, I've learned that needles given out by Arches are commonly being shared by drug users. Arches stated desire is a clean needle for every use. They control us inside the SES. It's my opinion they fail to control that outside the SCS. Of course they don't control needle usage outside the SCS. They can't follow everyone around and smack their hands if they try sharing a needle. Can you imagine the money and staffing requirements for something that massive? That's unrealistic. And on the point of sharing clean needles, if people who use drugs share their clean needles, imagine what it would be like if they didn't get clean needles. If people are going to share needles anyhow, then increasing the supply of clean needles reduces the chances of infected needles being shared. Pointing out needle sharing underscores the the purpose of the SCS. By distributing needles into our community, they are in fact enabling drug users to share needles. No, they're not. People are going to share regardless of whether Arches distributes free, clean needles. Arches isn't enabling. They're reducing infection rates. LPS members have said that 10 to 15 doses may be loaded into one needle, then passed around to many users with each injecting a portion until the needle is empty. Assuming this is true, so what? You think if Arches stopped distributing needles, this would stop? You think they wouldn't just use needles from other sources? I have witnessed that myself. Really? You've witnessed someone loading 10 to 15 doses of a drug into a needle, then passing that needle around to many users. Really? Why do you have a hard time believing this? Where did you witness this? Again, stop for a moment and let, the really, let that really sink in. Arches is distributing needles, thereby propagating the shared use of needles amongst illegal drug users. Wow. Just wow. First of all, people who use drugs aren't illegal. People can't be illegal. Second, just because people share needles doesn't mean that it's done widely, nor that how widespread it is is because of Arch's needle distribution program, which has been in place for decades. I'd love to see some evidence that the needle sharing is widespread and directly because of Arch's. Third, Assuming Higgins' claim is true and needle sharing is indeed widespread, then providing clean needles is a good thing. As I already mentioned, the larger the supply of clean needles, the lower the risk of infection. At the council meeting of July 23rd, 2018, we discussed a resolution to direct Arches to stop the distribution of needles. During that discussion, Councillor Mishiro said, and I quote, the whole goal is one clean needle for every time somebody uses. Councillor Mishiro, 
this isn't happening. Arches has failed at that goal. So because every injection that happens in Lethbridge isn't with a brand new needle means we should just give up, even though hundreds of thousands of instances of drug use have occurred using clean, unshared needles, we should stop it all because sometimes needles are shared? If your business doesn't meet the revenue projections you set, do you just shut down your business? Users are passing needles around that Arches freely gives to them. Gives to them. My opinion, that's an epic fail. You have an odd definition of epic fail. So even though distributing needles reduces infection rates to people who use drugs as well as to the general public, and even though plenty of people use needles without sharing because some people share needles, that makes the needle distribution program an epic fail? You have a low bar. On July 23rd, 2018, we did a vote on a similar motion to direct Arches to stop distributing needles into our community, and that motion did not pass. So why am I bringing this forward again? At that time, I suggested that we give it a try to see if it helps with the needle debris in our community. I was told that needle debris would improve with the operation of the SES and other programs put in place. Sharp boxes in our community, warning signs in our playgrounds, clean sweep, and others. More than a year has passed since that vote. The needle debris still exists. Perhaps somewhat improved, perhaps worse. Certainly not gone. Wait, what? Perhaps somewhat improved? Perhaps worse? What is that supposed to mean? You think whether there has been an improvement has yet to be determined? You and your dog whistling. Of course needle debris has improved. Arches distribute 70% fewer needles than they did before the SCS opened, and 83% more needles are returned to Arches than before the SCS opened. There are fewer needles going out and more needles coming back. There's literally less needle debris out there. It's not perhaps somewhat improved. It has improved significantly. I'm still receiving many complaints and concerns from citizens of Lethbridge regarding the needle debris. Of course, no one is saying that Arches has eliminated all debris out there. Not everyone will use it the SCS and not everyone is going to discard their needles responsibly. Citizens tell me they want Arches to stop distributing needles. This doesn't surprise me. You've positioned yourself as the de facto critic of the SCS, so it makes sense that those who oppose it would contact you. If needles are to be used, that must occur inside the supervised consumption site, as it is called a supervised consumption site, and no needle should be allowed to leave the site. This argument doesn't even make sense. It's called a supervised consumption site because the consumption that occurs there is supervised, not because all consumption in the city must occur there. We recently had another innocent child pricked by a discarded needle in our community. My heart goes out to that child and family, and I say to them, I'm sorry that that happened. Yes, it's unfortunate this happened to this child. However, thanks to Arches operating the SCS and distributing clean needles, the risk of that child contracting an infection is virtually non-existent. And I'm doing all that I can to help reduce the flow of needles into our community by bringing this resolution forward today. Except reducing the flow of needles puts people who use drugs at risk, and it puts the general public at risk. Reducing the flow of needles is irresponsible. I'm bringing this forward, this resolution forward because voters have asked me to do so. And I've waited for a year, and needle debris is still an issue. But a smaller issue than it used to be, which means Arches program is working. Restricting their program would make needle debris worse. We are told that if Arches stops needle distribution, the needle debris would not improve. Not only would it not be improved, but it also would worsen. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm sure none of us around here have a crystal ball. What? You don't need a crystal ball. Just look at the data. Fewer needles going out, more needles coming back. There's literally less needle debris. That's not because Arches isn't working. You need to stop putting your head in the sand and start listening to the facts. The only way to find out is to try. I'm asking us to try as a council by approving this resolution. No, trying your suggestion isn't the only way. Another way is to look at the local data as well as the more general published, peer-reviewed, scientific research on the topic. Like, I don't get how you claim you were going to let Arches try it for a year then claim it was an epic fail, but you think you're trying won't be. How can you think trial and error is a failure for Arches, but trial and error will work for you? It's irresponsible to blindly try something when all the data and research say that thing will have negative consequences.
we are told that needles are coming in via Amazon and that others, including pharmacies and perhaps the shelter, are handing them out. Exactly. And that's not even including stealing them. That's why stopping the flow from arches won't accomplish what you think it will. People will still get needles. More than 12 months have passed, and I have not seen the numbers as to what quantity of needles are coming from all these various sources. To the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, the vast majority, directly and indirectly, come from arches. No one has proven otherwise, and they have had a year to do so. Great. It's a good thing that the majority are coming from arches. That improves the health of people who use drugs and improves the health and safety of the general community. Cut that supply off, and the majority won't be coming from arches anymore, and public health and safety will be threatened. Let's stop the flow of needles into our community from one main source and then monitor the results. This is a horrible idea. Reducing access to free, clean needles will put the health and safety of the public at risk, both for people who use drugs and for the broader community. If it helps, then great. If not, maybe we have to try another solution. We have another solution already. Free, accessible, clean needles. That is the best way to improve the health and safety of the community. However, what I don't agree with is doing nothing. What? Nothing? We're not doing nothing. Arches are doing something. First, they're making sure people who use drugs can access clean, free needles. This reduces the spread of infection. They also collect those needles, which improves safety. They distribute fewer needles than they did two years ago, and they collect more needles than they did two years ago. Second, a quarter of a million incidents of drug use occurred at the SCS. None of those occurred in parks or back alleys or school playgrounds. So there are fewer incidents of public drug usage. Third, they've also reversed thousands of overdoses, saving lives. Of those reversals, only 15.7% needed EMS attendance. They're saving lives and saving taxpayer money. Finally, Artis has increased uptake and access to health and social services, including treatment and detox. They've made nearly 10,000 referrals to external health services. Inside the SCS, they've provided thousands of additional health services to clients as well. Nearly 5,000 addictions counseling efforts, nearly 6,000 nursing efforts, and over 2,100 cultural efforts. To dismiss all of that as doing nothing is woefully ignorant. I don't agree with saying that it is out of control or we are powerless and that there is nothing we can do. Who's saying that? Nothing is out of our control. That's why Arches is doing something about it, when literally no one else is. Arches didn't wait until the province finally decided to fund detox, intox, treatment, and supportive housing services before deciding to do something about the drug crisis. They decided to do something now. They decided now was the time to save lives and improve the health and safety of our community. We are charged with, ensu with ensuring the safety of our citizens. Exactly. That's what Arches is doing. Indeed, these are things we can do. What can we do? There's lots we can do. We can make requests to the Alberta government and the federal government to put conditions on Arches in order for Arches to continue to receive funding and a federal exemption to operate the SCS. What kind of conditions? We could look at zoning, development permit, and business license of Arches to see if they're in compliance. How would they be non-compliant? We could start enforcing other bylaw infractions near the SCS rather than having the current free-for-all zone. What bylaw infractions? We could talk to the police commission about actual enforcement of our laws everywhere outside the SCS, both near and far. Why do you get the impression they aren't enforcing the law? We could create new bylaws that discourage the needle debris and discourage what is going on in the immediate area outside the SCS. How would you discourage needle debris? Isn't littering already against the law? How is making it illegal again going to change anything? And what do you mean by discourage what is going on in the immediate area outside the SCS? Discourage people from waiting outside up to two hours for the consumption booth to become available? Discourage people from using in the parking lot? What would that look like? Throw them into jail for using? Then what? You think they're magically going to overcome their addiction in jail? Would jail time discourage them from coming to the SCS, forcing them back into the community to use? We should amend our zoning bylaw to ensure no more SES open in other parts of Lethbridge. Consumption services must be accessible. While the current location of the SES is accessible to a large population, public drug usage still occurs. More locations may be able to address that. Remember, 
Hundreds of thousands of incidents of drug usage have occurred in private in the SCS rather than out in the open in public. That's a good thing. More sites can improve that number even more, thereby further improving the health and safety of the community. We could look at terminating current agreements between the city and Arches, if any exist. Wait, if any exist? So you don't even know all the time you've had to prepare for the resolution, and not once did you take the time to investigate whether the city of Lethbridge and Arches have an agreement? Did you do any actual research for your monologue? I mean, other than chatting with people who are mortally opposed to drugs. I'm not advocating that we do these things. Let me repeat that so everyone is clear. I'm not advocating that we do these things. I'm simply tired of hearing the excuse that there's nothing we can do as the city. Who's seen this? There's plenty already being done. I don't understand this. I'm merely pointing out there are indeed things we can do. The resolution asks the Alberta government to help us. We can and must do this. No, it doesn't. If the provincial government restricted needle distribution, it would not help us. It would make the situation worse, putting the health and safety of the community at risk. This was a dangerous, irresponsible proposal. There are two parts of the resolution. The first deals with needles and needle debris. I've spoken to that. I'll now speak a little bit about the second part of the resolution named the supervised consumption of drugs at the SES. In 2017, Mayor Spearman stated in a Lethbridge News Now interview that, and I quote, the research shows that these facilities don't have a negative impact on the businesses around them. So we're confident the location is the correct one and that this will be a success in the city. Mayor Spearman, the citizens of Lethbridge are telling me the research was wrong and therefore your, your confidence was misplaced. The research wasn't wrong. The research reports the data, and that's what the data shows. Local public perception doesn't change the data of generalized research. Businesses in the area are indeed suffering a huge negative impact, as are all community members that have grown afraid of that part of the city. Negative impact in what way? Crime is down. There have been fewer reported incidents of crime every month between February and July this year compared to the same months of 2018. That's both in the community at large and in the downtown and the Upper East Side. People having sex behind their building? This was happening in the city before the SCS opened. Public drug usage? This too was happening in the city before the SCS opened. What huge negative impact has the SCS directly caused to businesses in the area? In 2017, Jill Manning spoke to Lethbridge News Now and said that, and I quote, a facility like this helps to solve those issues because it provides a central location where that is a specific purpose for the location. We know that petty crime does not go up. Miss Manning appears to have been mistaken. Crime has indeed gone up. Remember, we're number one. Sure, but crime has been increasing for years, long before the SCS opened. Petty crime is already rising, so you can't claim that any increases that have occurred are because of the SCS. Doing so is intellectually dishonest. Plus, the increase of the Crime Severity Index for 2018 was the second lowest increase in the last five years. Since the SCS opened, increase to crime has slowed, and as I already mentioned, Lethbridge is on track to showing less crime in 2019 than in 2018. Miss Manning has mentioned on social media that Arches currently employs 174 paid staff. According to the Lethbridge Police Service 2017 annual report, the LPS had 169 sworn members in 2017. Again, let's stop and think about that. Yes, please, let's. Arches has more paid employees than the LPS has sworn members in 2017. I find that to be utterly astounding. Why? What's astounding about it? Arches provides 16 health services in addition to consumption services, and these services have been accessed thousands of times. You need personnel to run those programs. Plus, the supervised consumption site operates 24-7. Obviously, that has to be staffed in multiple shifts. The SCS has four multidisciplinary teams, and each team consists of RNs, LPNs, primary care paramedics, addictions counselors, harm reduction specialists, and peer support workers. You know who else employs more people than the LPS? Alberta Health Services. They employ nearly 3,500 people in Lethbridge. That's 19 times as many staff as the LPS has. Why aren't you complaining about them? Why don't you find that astounding? And they appear to still be hiring. Excellent. The more people delivering their health services, the more people can access those health services. Let's further improve the health and safety of our community. The location and operation of the SCS has had terrible consequences for businesses nearby and the community as a whole. Businesses are suffering. Drug addicts are using both 
are using drugs both inside and outside the SCS. Before the SCS, people were using drugs only outside the SCS. Arshis has seen over a quarter of a million instances of drug use inside the SCS. Where do you think that drug usage would have occurred if the SCS shut down? Outside the SCS. If you're concerned about the amount of drug usage outside the SCS, then you should support the SCS operating. The SCS reduces the amount of drug usage outside the SCS. Their massive number of users in the area and their actions have caused many citizens to avoid the area. Why? Why are people avoiding the area? Are they afraid they're going to get addicted too? Do they feel uncomfortable seeing someone else using drugs? Do they feel uncomfortable when a group of people are gathered together for something other than public celebrations? I don't understand this concern people have with being downtown. I've lived downtown for 13 years and other than the occasional panhandling, I hardly ever see behavior that would cause me to be afraid and I don't even consider panhandling to be fearful. Have I ever seen people drunk or high in public? Of course, but so what? The risk that someone being drunk or high as a threat to the public is low. The vast majority of people who are high or drunk in public just keep to themselves. I've literally seen people complain on social media that they came downtown once and someone approached them for money within a minute of parking their car so they'd never come downtown again. And there are countless other comments like that. I mean seriously, someone asked you for a dollar so now you're afraid to come downtown? That doesn't even make sense. How fragile can the bubble be that you live in that you view someone asking you for change as a physical threat? EMS, rank and file, call the area, the Bermuda Triangle, referring to the SCS, the shelter, and Galt Gardens. So are you suggesting that we shut down the shelter and Galt Gardens too? What's the point in mentioning this? Why do drug users hang out at and around the SCS? Multiple reasons. One reason is that we don't have enough consumption booths. We have only 13 booths and there's often a lineup, especially in the evening. People can be using their booth for up to 45 minutes. Once all the booths are filled, the wait can be as much as two hours. Clients come to the SCS, check in, and when a booth is free, their name is called. If they leave the area, they may miss their name being called and miss their chance to get in. Another reason is that clients know each other and when they see those they know, they're gonna visit. That's a natural thing for humans to do. I've heard that the SES is pumping with music and fun. Of course you have. Drug users come around and are warmly greeted by their fellow users. Yes, I already mentioned this. You seem surprised that people who know each other would warmly greet one another. Don't you warmly greet others you know? This is a completely normal thing to do. It seems odd that you're suggesting they shouldn't be warmly greeting people they know. What should be the alternative? Ignoring their friends? Being mean to them? It's like a big party. At times, they're even supplied with chocolate bars, pizza, chips, takeout food, etc. Food supplied on site is food that's donated. Local businesses and nonprofits occasionally drop off food to SES personnel to distribute to clients. Sometimes personnel bring in food to share. Sometimes clients bring in food to share. I don't understand why Blaine Hagen is framing the greeting of others warmly and the sharing of food with others as a negative thing. It sounds as though building community is a good thing. I wonder what our downtown would look like if the general public warmly greeted SES clients and shared food with them instead of shunning them. At least the SES has now stopped the unlicensed preparation of food on site. I wonder if Hagen was as concerned about unlicensed preparation of food during the whoop up days pancake breakfast throughout the city last month. Drug users have been given goodie bags including uh, Swiss chocolates from Costco, cookies, bubble gum, etc. Again, this is all donated. Not sure what Hagen is suggesting. Should the SES personnel keep the donations to themselves? Should they refuse all donations? And what is really shocking, there's even free Wi-Fi outside the SES for the drug users. Oh, how dare they? How dare the clients be able to communicate with others on their phones, if they have one, while waiting to use the services or while waiting in the post-consumption area? How dare they scroll through Facebook, read the news, or check job postings? I've heard all of this from EMS rank and file members, and they believe this is not right. Oh, well, in that case, if someone believes something, I must be wrong. They believe the operation of the SES is encouraging the use of drugs with this party atmosphere. Here's the thing about getting a paramedic education. It doesn't make you an expert on harm reduction, nor does it allow you to negate the years of scientific research or the countless factual data gathered on the issue. Higgins' appeal to authority fallacy is misguided. EMS frontline personnel believe we should be discouraging drug use, not encouraging it. I, for one, agree with them. Well, goody for them. And for you. Here's the thing though, Arches doesn't encourage drug use. The drug use is happening. It was happening before the SES opened. It would happen if the SES shut down. The drug use is happening because people are addicted. People come to the SES because they're addicted. Shutting down the SES 
wouldn't eliminate addiction. You know what would discourage drug use? Having more than one detox bed in the city dedicated to the suboxone initiation. Having intox services. Having treatment services. Having supportive housing. Yet not once in this 20 minute dialogue did Hagen ever encourage people in council chambers to petition the provincial government to fund such desperately needed services. LPS frontline workers had said there's been a massive shift from opioids to meth in Lethbridge. No wonder we're becoming known as Methbridge. We're not becoming known as Methbridge. That's a nickname we've had for years, long before the SCS opened. Even so, what's your point? Are you trying to say that it's the SCS's fault that people are shifting from opioids to meth? EMS workers have revived drug users with Narcan, only to have them wake up fighting the EMS workers because they actually took both opioids and meth at the same time. Again, why are you saying this? Are you trying to tie this to the SCS somehow? It's Arch's fault that people are taking opioids and meth? It's dangerous out there. EMS workers have said there's burnout for them for putting their all into people that don't actually care about themselves. Well then it's a good thing the SCS is open. Of the more than 2,500 medical emergencies that have occurred at the SCS between February 2018 and July 2019, EMS have responded to 15.7% of them. SCS personnel took care of 85% of the medical emergencies all on their own. The SCS is reducing the workload of EMS workers. If EMS workers are experiencing burnout from responding to medical emergencies related to the drug crisis, and the SCS is reducing how many medical emergencies they respond to, then that's a good thing. They say it is a badge of honor for a drug user to be revived over and over again. The addicts are proud of it and boast about how many times they've been revived. Let's say this is true. What's the point in saying it? Are you saying that we should limit how many times a person is revived? Because they allegedly boast about being revived multiple times, we shouldn't revive them after a certain limit? Sorry, Blake. We've already revived you four times. We'll just watch you die now because you filled up your repeat revival card, honestly. EMS rank and file have said that we now have drug tourists in Lethbridge. We have drawn to Lethbridge from outside both dealers and users. Bull, where's the proof for this? How do you even track something like this? They're certainly not using the SCS. Frontline personnel I've talked to in person at the SCS say they see only local people at the site. Drug tourists, not something we anticipated. Not something the social, the so-called experts, or should I call them activists, warned us we would, would come with the SCS. Perhaps they aren't very expert at all. Wait, so everyone who researches the topic of harm reduction is an activist now? Every academic professional researcher who objectively studies scientific data, who publishes their findings in academic journals reviewed by other researchers are activists? Now you're just purposefully trying to incite prejudice. A year has passed since my similar resolution. Have we learned more in that year about drug users in our city? I would sure like to know how many of the addicts are long-term residents of our city and how many are here for the easily obtainable drugs. Easily obtainable drugs? What? Why would you suggest that drugs are more easily obtained in Lethbridge than anywhere else? Especially in a monologue about the SCS during debate about the SCS. Are you trying to suggest that the SCS makes drugs more easily available? Because the SCS doesn't actually supply drugs. Its existence doesn't make drugs any more available. And the SCS and the no hassle zone the free Wi-Fi, the goodie bags, the party atmosphere, the free needles, so on, so on, and so on. We should have data as to how many users in our city are truly residents versus tourists. If we don't have that data, why not? Because it'd be next to impossible to gather. LPS must surely be able to determine the residency of dealers and addicts in our city. How? Be in every home, every park, every back alley at all times? Then card everyone they think are dealing or using drugs? Come on, Blaine. This is ridiculous. It's unrealistic to expect the cops to be able to know where every dealer and drug user is at all times. Do you ever think through your suggestions? If Arches is gathering data, that would be great data for us to have. When you say stuff like this, it just shows everyone that you have never been to the SCS, that you haven't talked to Arches. Because if you had, you wouldn't need to wonder if they have this information. I have been to the SCS, and the people I've talked to there had told me that virtually all of their clients are local. Come on, Blaine. All it takes is a bit of effort on your part. You can't sit as a representative of the people if you're not willing to become informed on a topic that we expect you to govern on. Learn to be objective, rather than cherry-picking rhetoric that confirms your bias Speaking of which, it seems that you only gather and share data that will help their cause. Look in the mirror, Blaine. Are we destroying part of our downtown for our long-term residents? Are we doing it for the drug tourists? 
If anyone has this information to me, please provide it to me later. Oh, please. The downtown is not being destroyed. The downtown is more vibrant than it was when I moved here 21 years ago. I appreciate hearing from EMS, per EMS personnel and LPS personnel. Interesting. Why thank only them? Why not thank Arches personnel? Why not thank personnel who work in the SCS? Why not thank harm reduction researchers? Oh, because you haven't talked to any of them. You specifically chose to reach out to specific people, or maybe they reached out to you. You failed at objectively collecting data. In fact, we could even say that this is... What was that term you used? Oh, right. An epic fail. I thank them for their very informed input. Oh, give me a break. They're not informed. They're feeding you lies and unproven rumors. You seriously need to talk to the professionals. I realize they feel they are putting their jobs at risk by speaking out, and they have said their fear they fear retribution. <laughs> Whatever. Not sure how these anonymous people, assuming they even exist and you're not using imaginary pawns in your scheming, are putting their jobs on the line when no one knows who they are. For my fellow counselors that haven't done so, I suggest that you meet privately with frontline EMS and LPS personnel and get them to open day up to you in a safe environment about their experiences you'll be enlightened. If you want to be enlightened, go speak to Arches. Talk to people who work 24 hours of every day with people who use drugs. They know the real stories. They have the actual facts. They see it every day. Consumption at the current location must stop. Wait, I thought you said you didn't want the SCS shut down. I thought you just wanted to prevent needles from leaving the site. I thought you just wanted a temporary funding freeze while the government completes their operational review. Now you're saying that all consumption must stop at the SCS? If there's no consumption, then there's no consumption site. Consumption at the current location must stop. So, there it is. There's the summary of your position. You do want to shut down entirely. It is doing more overall harm than good. That couldn't be more wrong. Over a quarter of a million visits have occurred at the SCS since it opened. The SCS literally prevented hundreds of thousands of instances of drug uses from occurring in public. If the SCS didn't exist, there would be more public drug usage. Because the SCS allows the use of needles at the site, Arches is distributing 70% fewer needles than they used to. Plus, Arches is collecting 83% more needles than they used to. The SCS is literally resulting in fewer needles being out in public. SCS personnel are responding to 85% of the medical emergencies without needing help from EMS. The SCS is literally reducing the workload of the EMS. Every time an overdose occurs at the SCS, and SCS personnel alone respond to it. It means no EMS visit and no ER visit. Every dollar we spend on supervised consumption services saves $5 in general health care and emergency services costs. The SCS is literally saving taxpayer money. The SCS is reducing public drug usage. They're reducing the number of needles in public. They're reducing the workload of EMS. And they're saving taxpayer money. If we shut the SCS down, as Higgins suggests, public drug usage will increase. The number of needles in public will increase. The workload on EMS will increase. And the amount of money taxpayers have to pay towards the drug crisis will go up. The SCS is not doing more harm than good, as Higgins suggests it is. Shutting it down is what will do more harm than good. This is why I believe we must immediately request the Alberta government to suspend the funding for consumption at the site. Thank you. Your belief is wrong. Your feelings are misguided. Facts don't care about your feelings, Blaine. You're ignoring basic logic and reason. You're going after feelings and rumor and fear. You're unfit to govern. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Higgins. Does anybody know what that noise is? Thanks for watching. You can follow me online at seaver.ca slash Kim. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. If you appreciate the videos I share here on YouTube, the posts I write on my blog, and the content I share on my other social media accounts, please consider making a monthly donation, either through PayPal or Patreon. Creating and curating this content takes a lot of time, but I'm also running a business, which makes my time limited. Your donation would mean I wouldn't have to drum up business to pay my bills, which would allow me to devote more time to researching issues like this one, and I could post videos like this more often. Thank you for your consideration and your support. If you agree with the points I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel.